Okay. Hello and welcome to DTLT today. My name is Andy Rush and what I want to do today is talk about um, some of the, the programs and, and pieces of software that I use on a daily basis. Um, in general, my, my favorite things, if you will. Um, and it, we're kind of empty today in the offices at DTLT. Um, just to show you, just to prove it. Um, <clears throat> normally this is a bustling hive of activity in DuPont Hall, uh, but right now I'm all by my lonesome self and it's kind of sad, but I will persevere. Um, but again, what I want to do today is, is talk about just some of the, the general stuff that I use um, on a daily basis, um, known as my favorite things. Okay. Um, one of my favorite things that I need to take a drink of right now is, of course, Pepsi. Get it right way around here. A little Pepsi logo. The rest of my colleagues are Coke drinkers. I prefer Pepsi because I'm a rebel like that. Um, and I know they'll appreciate me mentioning the alternative product that we use in this office. Um, so a few of my favorite things. Um, I've got a few of them kind of around my desk here. Um, one of them is my iPad, which I'm kind of taking and using for my notes, and that'll come into play here in, in just a little bit. Um, I am now a Mac user. I want to talk a little bit about the Mac um, and why I switched to that. Um, and, a little, and a couple of the features specifically with the Mac that, that I've grown to, to love and, and despise PCs because they don't have them. Um, also, just a few pieces of software. Um, we're going to look at ScreenFlow and just a couple others. So I'll keep some of those secret so that you stay tuned to the whole program. Um, I also want to make sure that I hit my timer and, and I don't go too far over today. Um, so first, my, my Mac. Um, I've been a, a PC user a, a lot of my life. Um, way back in the day, though, back in the 80s, um, when I was a, a in, the, in my 20s, so you get an idea of how old I am, um, I used an Amiga computer. Um, graduated from there um, it, in discovered Macs and worked in a Mac shop for a while, but uh, in 92 I went to SUNY Cortland and started using Macs. One of the reasons that I got the job was because I was a Mac user. Um, so um, it didn't lead to really good jobs, so I had to kind of get my PC uh, Windows thing on to get some jobs after that, but eventually um, went to a school and used Windows and Macs kind of trans, uh, you know, both together. Um, eventually came to Mary Washington College, which is now the University of Mary Washington in August of 98, and was a PC user for a good portion of that time. Um, back in 2008, I decided to buy a MacBook Pro from the college uh, because I wanted to run Windows Vista as fast as I possibly could and did some research and found that the MacBook Pro did a really good job at that. Um, it was probably six months later that I started to go to the Mac side more and more, um, went to the NMC conference and had a little bit of Mac envy. So uh, at that point, I kind of made the switch completely over to the MacBook Pro. Um, and and one of the, a couple of the reasons that, that I do, um, one of them being, I'll just switch you over to the Macintosh interface here for a second. Um, The, the operating system itself, I think, is, is pretty stable. It's Linux-based and, and, or Unix-based, and, and they say that's a good thing. I mean, I, th I think it's a good operating system. Um, it, it does, in my opinion, I've had it crash less than, than Windows stuff. And, and since I've switched over and I have PCs still in my home, um, I, I do find that it just, it just functions uh, better than, than uh, the PC does. Um, I was doing media serving kind of stuff in my house and, and just kind of gave up with the PC and the Mac has, has served me really well lately. Um, but a couple of things that I like about the Mac is that when you're in the finder, or the, or the file viewer, if you will, you can look at documents very easily without opening them up. So for instance, this is a, um, a Windows document or, or a Word document and all I need to do is just hit the space bar and it will give me kind of a, a quick uh, preview of, of what, it, what the document looks like, okay, without having to wait for Word to open up and get in there. And I can, I can scroll down and I can look at a, look at a full, full preview. I can go full screen if I want to. 
Um, so that's nice. And that, and that works for lots of different um, programs that are on uh, the Macintosh in terms of different file uh, formats, you know, JPEGs, it'll show a, the JPEG image in a window. Um, there are plugins, and for instance, somebody asked me a question today about looking at zip files. Um, there are actually plugins for quick, uh, what's called Quick Look, uh, and one of them is called Better Zip. So, for instance, here I've got a zip file, and I'll just hit the space bar, and what it will do is it'll show me the contents of that zip file before I have to open up or, or unarchive it. Um, so, um, Better Zip is is this. Uh, File that or this program that's plugin that you actually load into the computer to use um, use this particular functionality. Um, let's see if I can find a JPEG image here that's not uh, too outrageous. Okay, um, here's just a preview image of a JPEG, so I, so I can look at it very quickly. I don't have to open it up in any kind of uh, editing program or anything like that. Um, if I did double click on it, it would open a program called Preview, which is my other favorite thing on the Macintosh. Um, very quickly and easily I can go in and I can look at this image. I can also do things like go in and, and crop the image if I want to. So I go to the, go and select it with the selection tool, um, choose crop here and I actually can actually shrink that down and then I can save that file back out as uh, a separate file. So I do really like the, uh, the abilities and the, ca the capabilities in, in Preview. Um, Preview also will open up um, PDF documents. So for instance, here's a document on ScreenFlow. Um, and by the way, one of my other favorite things, ScreenFlow, which just was released um, a new 3.0 version. Um, you can go to telestream.com and look for products and go to ScreenFlow or just do a search for ScreenFlow. Um, a really great Macintosh screencast recording program. Um, $99, I think there's a 10% discount for educators, um, but does a lot of nice uh, things in terms of screencast, but it also, it really does function pretty well as a um, video editor. You can actually bring in any kind of video that, that it supports, um, QuickTime videos especially, and you can go in, you can add and do quick things and, and even um, do call-outs and other things, put graphics on top of things very very quickly and easily. So it does also serve as kind of a, a video editor um, that will uh, do some extra things that, that a lot of videos take a lot of time to do or, or are kind of difficult to use. So uh, preview and quick look are two of the big reasons why I use a Mac. Okay. Um, so we've talked a little bit about um, ScreenFlow, again, Telestream.com, let me just bring that up here. Um, Telestream.com is the company that makes ScreenFlow. They also make one of my other pieces, my favorite pieces of software, Wirecast, which is what we're using to do these uh, DTLT Today shows. So Telestream.com is the place where you go to get ScreenFlow and Wirecast. All right. Um, another one that I use is TweetDeck. Um, and some people haven't gotten into TweetDeck. I know Timmy Boy wasn't a really big fan. Um, one of the reasons that I like to use TweetDeck is it allows me to separate things into columns. Um, and I'll show you what I mean here. What I've got on my screen up at the top is my window to type my tweets. Um, and then I have columns. So I have my whole stream here on the left. But then I have my, D my DTLT Today stream. Um, so I can actually filter stuff out. So if I can't get back through all my, my, uh, my mainstream, all my friend stream, I can at least filter things out and kind of look at what's going on in DTLT today. I have a group that's called DTLT in this middle column. Um, so I can kind of filter things out if I can't catch up to all the other stuff. So I want to catch up with all the good stuff, at least in DTLT, that my DTLT colleagues have mentioned. Um, and you can actually move these things around. So if I want DTLT to be closer to my left-hand side and, and filter this a little bit more easily, um, you can do that. You can also go and you can add searches. So you can add a column. You can type in a search and say there's a conference going on like NMC. You can quick click that and you can have a quickly um, kind of organized column that is associated with that particular subject. Okay, so TweetDeck is another one of my, one of my favorite programs. Okay, what's next? 
Well, one of the ways that um, I kind of keep track of myself during DT DTLT today is with a program called Evernote. Um, it's a thing that's running on my iPad right now, which I'm looking down at, um, just to kind of keep me so that I am covering everything that I want to cover. I've got all my notes on my iPad. And what I can do before a show is go into the actual Evernote program on my Mac, add in all my notes that I want to include. Then when I get over to the table where we actually tape the program, I can keep my iPad and then just do a quick sync to have the latest, greatest stuff that I've written in my, uh, my Evernote page. Um, so let me just kind of show you an example of, of how I use this. Um, we'll switch back to our computer screen here and we'll bring up Evernote. And here is what the interface looks like. Um, on the left hand side you have all your notebooks and then notes that have been updated and so I try to keep a track of, of what I've updated last. I created a brand new notebook just to isolate this one called DTLT today. But here are all my notes that I have um, in my DTLT note uh, notebook um, and I can go in and I can add other things and let's actually add something at the very bottom of this. So we'll say just a uh, note to myself. Okay, And so we'll add some of that stuff and what I can do is actually sync this and just send it up to the web and this actually gets saved on the web. Um, and then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to try to show you what my iPad screen looks like. Just let me arrange this really quickly. Okay. Bear with me a second as I switch to this. Okay, so here's my iPad and I'll try to get you a good view of this. Okay, and I'm just going to try to focus on this a little bit. All right. And we'll zoom in just a little bit as well. And I've got a little bit of, ref of a reflection, so I'm going to try to get rid of that if I can. Oh. All right, you're going to have to deal with the reflection. But so here's the, here's this, and I'm using an IPVO um, webcam um, to do this. Um, you can look up IPVO, IPEVO. That's another one of my favorite things. But what I can do next then is I can sync my sync my notes. So at the bottom after the Insta paper, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, I'm just going to click on the sync button, which is right down here at the bottom. So I'll just click on this button, and it's going to go out and sync. And now you'll notice that just a note to myself has been automatically kind of synced to this device. Um, it exists for iPad, for iPhone, for the Mac, and you can also go to a website where you've got your Evernote account. So it's available in all those places, and all you need to do is sync instantly as long as you have a network connection. So. Um, Evernote is a really cool to, to, tool to kind of keep my notes and, and myself together, if you will. Um, so Evernote is another one of my favorite things. Um, let me switch back to my, my camera view here and, and I'll show you. This is the IPVO camera. Um, and again, it's called the IPVO Point to View. Um, if you search for IPEVO and then Point to View is the name of the camera, it's a, it's a neat little camera that you can use as kind of a document camera. Um, I use it to, to I use it to show you the office. I can also use it uh, to show you what the iPad looks like, and I can just as easily use this for an iPhone as well. So, um, just a few of my my favorite things. The last thing I want to show you today, and I'm probably running a little long. I hope you guys are still interested. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is a program called Instapaper. Um, really cool program that allows you to um, format a document on the web for a device like the iPad or a Kindle and that sort of thing. Um, makes things a lot easier to read. So let me just show you a little bit about how this works. All right. Um, I'm going to switch back to my computer view and I'm going to go to the Instapaper website. Okay. Instapaper.com and here are some of the documents that I recently Instapapered. Um, you can actually save a little bookmarklet to... Um, I didn't switch, did I? Sorry about that. There's instapaper.com. Okay, so you can actually uh, switch, you can actually uh, save documents here at, at Instapaper, and um, you can even save a little bookmarklet to, to allow you to what we call Instapaper text. So let me just kind of zoom in, I'll show you exactly where that is. Right here is this button that says Instapaper it. So if I'm on a website that I want to save a document from, um, I can click this button and send it, save it to Instapaper, and that, then it's going to be available at the website. And what it does is, let's just zoom back out here. 
um, it allows me to take the document, the original, which would look something like this. For instance, this is a Washington Post um, blog post talking about education. Okay? What I can do instead is actually view the text version of that. So it will kind of filter out the, um, the ads and whatnot and just allow me to read that very easily on a web page. Okay? You can always go back and you can view the original if you want to. Uh, but this will kind of allow you to uh, uh, look at a document in a much more clean fashion. The other thing that you can do is you can use Instapaper on your iPad. So I'm going to quickly in the background here open up my Instapaper program. Um, and I'll cancel that. And we'll go to the articles. And also make sure that we're synced up here. Looks like we are. So the, only other, the other thing I'm going to do is try to show you the iPad. Okay. So we'll go to that shot. So here's here's the program on the iPad, kind of a little bit what it looks like. And this is a $4.99 or $3.99 program, um, but to me it was worth it to be able to read this stuff on the iPad. So I'm going to click that document that we were just looking at on the web from the Washington Post and bring that up. And so now I can look at this on my iPad. And actually what I'll do is, is turn it and reorient things here. And so here's the document, and I can read this at my leisure at a later time. So as long as I can connect to the web and at least sync these documents, I can bring this up, and then I can look at this document in a much more clean and readable format. Um, so uh, just another program that I like to use called Instapaper. All right? So those are a few of my favorite things. Um, if you love this episode, let us know. If you hated this episode, let us know. We can take criticism, um, but I thought it would be a, just a good time to kind of show you some of the stuff that I use on a daily basis, um, how it helps me on my day-to-day -day work. Um, so I hope you enjoyed things today. Uh, that's DTLT today for uh, August 12th, 2011. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.